I'm gonna build the tiniest tiny home bike camper for Brett, a homeless guy living in the streets of South Carolina. We started by measuring and cutting down a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood into 12 inch sections. Because we're basically building a pop up camper that will be 1 foot tall when it's closed and 5 feet tall when it's open. This is the 6 bike camper that we've ever built and we really wanted to make it as lightweight as possible which is why we went with the pop up design. I used a pocket hole jig to drill some pocket holes then screwed my plywood pieces together and basically made a box. The inside of this bike camper will be 32 inches wide and 6 foot 4 inches long so Brett will have plenty of space to be able to sleep. It was really tough to find a place to build this bike camper since we live out of our camper van so we ended up renting an Airbnb and we only had 3 days to be able to build the entire bike camper but thankfully we were able to get it done. The next step was to install the 2x2 two two inch support beams that will hold up the floor so we pre-drilled and screwed in the wooden slats 6 inches apart. I then used 200 grit sandpaper and sanded the entire box because I wanted to paint it with exterior paint to make it more resistant to the elements and it'll also make it look much better. We ended up using the color mocha black which is a little browner than I wanted it to be but I guess it's better than just a regular piece of plywood. We just hit 170,000 subscribers which is freaking crazy and if you want to become an official member click the join button on our homepage. Every penny will go toward building videos like this. But now that the box is painted, we started to build the top of the bike camper that will open and close. And we used the same 2x2 two two inch wooden slats because they're cheap and super lightweight. The reason I chose this design is so when he's riding around, he can keep the bike camper closed so it's less bulky. And when he's parked up for the night, he can just pop it open and go to sleep. I split the entrance pieces in half so it can be a lot easier to get in and out of this bike camper. Then I screwed in a piano hinge so the top can open and close. I then finished painting the outside of the bike camper. It was then officially time to install the floor so I picked up a sheet of quarter inch corrugated plastic. This stuff is cheap, super strong and extremely lightweight so it's really good to use something like this in a bike camper. And I'm going to link some of these products down below just in case you guys are building one of your own. And if you guys have any questions feel free to drop a comment down below as I love to read every single one of them. But the next step was to install the struts. So we picked up two 20 pounders which should be plenty to keep the top of this bike camper up since it's so lightweight. These were kind of tricky to install because you have to put them in a certain spot but it wasn't too bad. This next part is the part I was most excited for which is installing this waterproof fabric that I found on Amazon which is almost like the material you would find on a traditional tent except this is a little thicker so I think it's a little more high quality and it'll last a little longer. We wrapped the fabric around 1 by 2 inch wooden slats then screwed them into the bike camper pinching the fabric in between the wooden slat to give it a nice tight fit. We then repeated the process on the other side and I was honestly really surprised of how well this worked because I normally run into a bunch of issues when I'm trying something new like this. But the next step was to start installing the wheels. So I measured, pre-drilled and installed the brackets that will hold the wheels using nuts and bolts. I made the brackets from materials that I found at Home Depot and I picked up the wheels from Amazon. I then repeated the process on the other side making sure that the wheels are in the same exact spots so this bike camper can roll as easy as possible. I also picked up some squared pipe that we're going to use for the legs of this bike camper and another pipe that's slightly smaller that can slide in and out of the first one. I drilled holes that a pin can fit into so he can adjust the legs down when the camper is popped up and adjust them back up when he's riding down the road. But this will ensure that the camper is nice and stable when he's inside of it and also make sure that no one rides away with him while he's sleeping. But once I finished installing the legs, it was finally time to install the roof. For the insulation, we're using quarter inch Artec from Henry's and this stuff is super lightweight and only ran us about 10 bucks. And for the roof, we're using the same corrugated plastic because it's super lightweight and completely waterproof. I then used tight foam from Loctite to glue the insulation to the frame, then laid the corrugated plastic over the insulation and screwed through the entire thing. I used screws that have rubber washers on them to make sure there's no leaks. Then I had to connect the arm that will connect the bike to the camper. So I drilled some holes and secured it using nuts and bolts. I then installed the handle so you can open and close the top piece and reflectors so people can see them just in case he decides to ride at night. For the door we're installing a screen that's hydrophobic so no water will go through it. It'll allow airflow while he's in it and also make sure that he doesn't get eaten alive by mosquitoes at night. We also reached out to Internova to see if they would donate one of their power stations to Brett so he can have power in his tiny home. They agreed and sent over their 600 watt power station that has 220 volt outlets, USB ports, a display screen, a flashlight with multiple modes. This power bank has life pull 4 lithium batteries and has a super fast charging time of 1 hour. It's got another flashlight, a 12 volt outlet and also has wireless charging on the top. This power Power station comes with a 12 volt charging cord so you can charge it inside of your car, a 120 volt outlet and a 100 watt solar panel so you can charge when you're off grid. This system is super fast and easy to set up and I think this power station will be a major upgrade for Brett. 
So shout out to Internova for sending us this power station and solar panel. If you guys want one, I'm going to link it down in the description below. But now that we have the power station and the bike campers finished, it was time to connect the bike camper to the bike. I finally gave it a test drive and man, this thing ran really nice. We finally finished up the bike camper and we're at the spot where we need to meet Brett. He's right around the building. Let's go get him. So we walked around the whole building and Brett isn't here yet. It's 10.30 now. He was supposed to be here at 10. So we're gonna give him a little more time and see if he shows up. So it's 12.13 and it doesn't seem like he's gonna be showing up. We drove around the block a couple of times to see if we could find him and we can't. So we're gonna try to load this bike camper into our van and drive around and look for him. If not, we're gonna find someone else. So see what happens. So we finally got the bike camper loaded up into the van and now we're going to drive around a little bit to look for Brett and if we can't find him we're just going to look for someone else. Hopefully we find him but if we don't it is what it is. We drove around the entire neighborhood looking for Brett but after hours of searching he was nowhere to be found so we decided to try and find someone else who might need this bike camper but it was a lot harder than it seemed. We drove around for hours and hours and couldn't find anyone and we're at the point where we just wanted to give up. But then we spotted a guy named David and after talking to him for a few minutes, I quickly found out that he was the perfect guy to give this to. So we build these bike campers and we give them away to people who need them. Opens up like this. When you're sleeping inside of it, mosquitoes don't eat you up at night. Uh, we got you a sleeping bag, a pillow, a bike lock, and then there's a, a bunch of size large shirts and underwear and stuff in there. Okay. And then, um, the cool part, David, I think you're gonna like this. So this is a power station. So if you have a phone, you can go ahead and charge it off of this. And at nighttime, if, when you need to see, it has a, a built-in flashlight. It's got a little cigarette lighter. And uh, it's got another flashlight on this side. Nice little handle. It could charge phones right on top wirelessly, USB ports, all that good stuff. And then when you need to charge it, if you can't find a place to charge it, this solar panel will open right up and you can charge it right, for, right from a solar panel. Yeah, you're welcome, man. You guys are awesome. <laughs> hey, God bless you, man.